Jimmy Mbogo. We are going to get into the conversation where we are talking matters, startups. We are looking at what you need to do in order for you to have a successful business. And with me is Bramwell Mwalo, who is the CEO of Zetova Company and is here to engage us in this conversation. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you All right, now me. let's get right into the conversation and look at how easy is it uh, to start a business, first of all, in Kenya? Well, it depends. If you have, uh, the hard part is always capital. Mm -hmm. If you have capital, um, everybody enters through their own. Some people save up, uh, some people have access or access to assets that they could use to borrow. Some have to start with nothing, just an idea, and then convince a few people to invest in your business. So I wouldn't say it is. It's, it's never easy. It's never easy because either you're really thinking, figuring out, either you're looking for resources. There's something you, you need to have before you actually start a business. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but I think at the end of the day is how badly do you need to do it? Uh, and what exactly do you want to do? Um, if you just, you know, moving five sacks of potatoes, that's, that could not be compared to wanting yes. to build, you know, a space business, you know. Um, so it depends on what you want to do how badly you want to do it and how complex is your field uh, of, of what you exactly want to do. Mm -hmm. mm. All right, and now let's move on and even uh, look at the types of startups that we have. Um, uh, when someone wants to start a business, what are some of the types, first of all, that we have? So uh, that my uh, opinion in this is uh, there are, I would classify three types of startups mm -hmm. and the classification is based on the what needs to be the understanding of the mindset that needs to be approached when you are actually starting off. The most common type of startup is I invent a product or I, or I create a piece of technology that can do something. Mm -hmm. And this, in essence, either I have created a product that could help sending money, I could create a product that basically is a consumable. Either it is a really, um, you know, uh, the, the sort for uh, granola bar, you know, things like that. And yes. then I can market it and get a lot of consumers around that specific product. That's the most common one. And that's simply, you know, either I'll create a, an app, then get users of that app, mm -hmm. even from one to a million. I can create, uh, you know, a piece of granola bar that hits and I can distribute close to two million pieces, that's, that's the most common one that is based on a product. Mm -hmm. uh, normally that has e quicker returns, let's say in one month or two months or three months of operations, you're able to see actual returns, customers and all. Uh, the second type of startup is simply a startup that is, is, is founded on a thesis. Mm -hmm. And this thesis is simply an idea or an ideology that if certain things are created, it will significantly make uh, either unlock a big opportunity or either make lives easier. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, um, uh, what Zetova is doing, which is creating, uh, we believe the thesis that founded Zetova is if we make it easy for Africa to use data and data science, would significantly unlock value uh, in terms of money value, opportunity value, relationship value, just by Africa using data. Now, a company like that requires you to basically invest in the testing of that thesis first, the sense of what product can you create to make that real. A good example that is common right now is ChatGPT. Mm -hmm. Most of us have known of it, I think, uh, since a few months. But this is an operation that has gone on for years. Mm -hmm. and, and it's been more of, you know, the thesis of if we make um, AI or la natural language processing available, what can it drastically do? What can AI do? So that's the thesis. And, and a few minds, and, you know, they created this open society called OpenAI, and people put in work and put in work over the years. They've tested different alterations to the point where they feel confident of, of what they, they have built to open it up to the market. Mm -hmm. Those kind of startups take really long and are very expensive to have. Uh, but if you succeed in creating something that has a market fit, you can make a billion dollars in a day. 
that simply uh, that's a different type of startups. Mm -hmm. Then the other one is a startup that probably may not really have a product, but basically they are pushing for social good. So these are social impacts that basically rely on other people supporting them or paying them to do something mm -hmm. in return. So they never really make money in essence, but they, they push an initiative, they put uh, uh, food forward. Uh, so it's sort of a win-win. A Some, you know, they're able to figure out a way of, of, of idea. Of so I guess in terms of having the clarity of what exactly you want to do, um, for those who want to start a research and design based, uh, by the way, those are the companies that end up becoming SpaceX, becoming Google, because, because it's founded on, an, or a, on, a, on a thesis that mm -hmm. if you are able to do this or provide the means of doing this, then you unlock X opportunity and that goes forth. For products, those are the most common ones. You invented something or you built something or you created something and this thing can be sold to a number of people. You test out in one market, then go to the other and the other. So those are the, th the three types of startups, I would say. All right, uh, mm -hmm. uh, very well um, explained. All right, now, when we look at these three, what are some of the popu most popular ones, especially in Kenya, that you can say uh, many people have really ventured into? The product ones. Everybody's creating something. Mm -hmm. um, like you'd see fintechs, there are a lot of fintech products, you know, either an app that helps connect a uh, merchant to a bank, and an app that uh, helps uh, you to pay um, you know, through your phone or to pay online, an app that allows you to buy something. Mm. See, these are products that are created, that you create it today and tomorrow, you have, uh, you can onboard. If it is actually have achieved market fit, mm. you can onboard a lot of customers, and mm. that's the most popular one. That's, that's, I'd say that's easier to start because a lot of entrepreneurs, when they build those kind of things, they have a level of clarity of what they want to achieve. So that's the most common one, actually, globally, in mm -hmm. terms of product-based businesses. Mm -hmm. The research-based, the research and uh, where you have an innovation, a research and innovation team that every day constantly you're spending millions. These are companies that end up inventing medicine, inventing robots, or some piece of technology that has multiple, multiple ways, multiple use cases of how it can be used. Those ones are really expensive. Mm -hmm. And most of the time, Africa can have this type of, of, of startups, but now raising that money because we are a brick and mortar. Uh, like I remember when I started my organization and I was starting Zetova, we built AI-driven um, uh, solutions, applications that just make it easy for executives in organizations to use data, mm -hmm. either for compliance, for forecasting, for all the stuff that they need. Now, for us to basically, even before we get to our Series A race, you know, you, you are going to spend more than $5 million before you actually take a product to market. So that is not your typical type of startup, okay. and it's very expensive to put in place. Uh, social impact, it depends on the popularity of the theme you're pushing. Yes. Uh, like right now, climate action is, is, has a, is, is a theme that basically has a lot of traction in terms of when you launch some of these things. Mm -hmm. um, some people, and it depends on the conviction, some, some social impacts are difficult because probably uh, the, the number of people who care about that issue are not so many. So that limits your ability to either raise money or convince, you know, a win-win situation when it comes to a product that probably you've crafted to push an idea. Mm -hmm. So those are some of those um, uh, limitations or things that people could consider before they do either. All right. And now let's move on and also look at um, Everyone these days wants to start a business. You finish, uh, the young people finish campus, they want to start a business. You've um, just been fired, you start a business. So what is what goes into um, starting this business? When you sit down and do you just wake up one morning and say, because many mm -hmm. just wake up and say, ah, I'll just put like a kiosk down there and then I'll start doing my business, or I will, I will just start uh, uh, making, um, I'll get an online platform and put my products there. So what goes into this? Sometimes a good uh, business is just, sometimes people can be lucky. And lucky I mean um, getting an opportunity, you're just in the right place, and then you happen to get the right set of information, then you happen to have the set in, in ideas, and then voila, you try something, it actually works. So in most cases, that's not the case. Uh, there's a difference between 
um, doing a business deal and actually building a business. Mm -hmm. A lot of people know how to do business deals. And some deals could actually be big. For instance, somebody just needs to do probably three to four deals a year, and they will make their 10 million, 30 million, or whatever, or their 500 shillings, 1,000 shillings. And th those are deals. Uh, yeah, I'd call them, th th those are more dealers. Right? That's not building a business. Building a business requires some level of clarity of exactly what are you trying to achieve. Mm. And this goes into complexities of what are you selling, where are you getting it, what are the operations that are going to go into place to make sure this process is repeated over and over again, and the risks that come with repeating this process over and over again, those risks that are optimally managed to basically make sure this process of repeating this over and over again does not stop. That's mm -hmm. now being a business. Mm -hmm. And you will change that process 10,000 times until you are 50 years old of business and all that. And the most important thing is then you involve people either as investors, as partners, as employees, as influencers, as regulators, and, and, and people get involved depending on the nature of business. That, that becomes the biggest part of running a business in terms of managing all these people, all these interests, all these exposures, all these benefits. So it's one thing that I, I see a lot of, you know, entrepreneurship has become a very popular, fancy thing. And I think a lot of times when a startup founder uh, goes on, you see them uh, being, like you'll just see when you hear it over, either we've won an award, either an MIT thing, we've raised money and all that. Th that's the easy part. Mm -hmm. The difficult part is the everyday what goes behind the scene and it's not really easy. Mm -hmm. Before you actually set out a mission on changing your entire life just because you want to s launch a startup or all that, there needs to be clarity of how far do you want to go with this thing. The bigger the scope, they say the, oh, when the ocean rises, it rises with everything, the mm -hmm. good and the bad. If you want to get $10 million worth of valuation, $100 million worth of valuation, it means you're going to face $100 million worth of demons. Mm -hmm. And, and that's, that's simply for you to hit that goal. So there's a level of clarity. And money cannot be, just the desire to make money can't be your only motivation because it goes beyond that. I think for people who want to make money, deals, deals are good. Because deals is one time, you, you don't need to do a hundred deals. You just probably need to do three deals a year mm -hmm. and you're good. Or mm -hmm. probably four or a deal monthly and you're good. But for a business, they require a mission. It requires some level of pursu uh, conviction to exactly what you want to do. Because 90% of the time, things will not be working in your favor. Mm -hmm. And uh, becoming successful is how often do you manage people how often do you manage resources? Sorry, not how often, but how well do you manage people? How well do you manage resources? And how well can you be committed to your mission? And that's simply what makes a successful business. Wow, very well said. I, I believe that is your parting shot. I was about to ask you to say your parting <laughs> shot, but you've yes. given it. All right, uh, there you have it. Um, we are going to go for a short break. We've been speaking to Bramwell Mwalo, who is the CEO of Zetova, speaking about startups. And I believe you've learned something small about when you just want to start a business and the three types of startups. All right, we are going to go for a short break. We'll be right back with more. Don't go too far. <laughs>